Hey guys, welcome to the channel Scuba Travel and Adventure. My name is Thomas and in today's video I will talk about uh, changing your bearings on uh, rear wheel. But uh, why am I doing this? Um, on my motorcycle I've put in about uh, 4,000 kilometers already and uh, this year I did quite a bit of off-road and on my last trip I ran into a major issue uh, when we were off-roading in Viper, Vaporous, Florida here, uh, the bike started to wobble and it started making weird noises. ABI, ABS light came on and a check engine light came on. Um, I wasn't sure at the time. I was checking the tire on the trail. I couldn't see nothing what's going on. And also I checked my, uh, I, I had the tires off before I went on my big adventure to British Columbia. But um, after I got home uh, yesterday, I took the wheel apart, I pulled it off and I was up for a major surprise. So what happened? Uh, one of my bearings on the right side on where the brake caliper is on Africa uh, totally shattered in pieces. Uh, basically, there was no uh, nothing left uh, out of it uh, when I took it out. And trust me, it was a job to do. It wasn't easy to take that bearing out of the place. So I will show you, even though I started the job already, and as a precaution, I will show you um, the bearing, what happened to it. I would recommend it. Don't wait uh, for the last moment when that happens to change your bearing. Change your bearing, I would say probably about 20, 25,000 if you're riding off-road. So uh, yesterday, uh, it took me pretty much uh, about four hours to yank that bearing out of there, grind it out, and uh, I mangled up uh, the hub a little bit as well, but I've got it out. So I will show you though uh, how to remove those bearings uh, if they're intact, if they're still good, and if the bearing balls are in place and the race seal is intact and, every, and the centerpiece is intact so uh, you can um, you can much easier take the bearing out of the hub than once the bearing is shot so anyways uh, i will show you the bearing pieces right now what happened to it so the balls were actually grinded to half so there's nothing left out of it that is the center piece of the bearing. It is uh, also very, very worn out. And uh, pretty much what's left uh, from the actual bearing is just the uh, half, what you see here. Hopefully the camera is gonna be able to catch this. Let me see if I can focus a little bit better. So those are the pieces. So, and uh, there's not much left out of it. It was a struggle to get it uh, removed. So I will get into this uh, job right now and I'll show you how to remove that bear those bearings. There's three bearings uh, in the back. Definitely you want to use some kind of uh, wood to protect your uh, disc, uh, the rotor. And uh, that's probably like I'm using like, uh, I don't know what are those, uh, six by sixes. So that's what I'm using uh, to get it out. And I will show you how I got the bearing out of here. So you see that it's a little bit uh, messed up here, but it's still good. Uh, the center pieces are still okay. So this is how it looks uh, after I removed uh, that bearing that uh, fell apart. And uh, right now it's just uh, the edges are a little bit uh, messed up from the tools that I had to use. So I had to grind off the edge of the bearing with Dremel tool to crack it. And then uh, I used the extractor. I should have used the extractor earlier, but uh, I came with the idea a little bit later on. There is this tool, it's an inner race uh, extractor. So basically you will take your uh, ABS uh, disc out of there, so to protect it. And then I put two two by fours on top and I put this in there 
and I extracted the bearing after it was uh, like it had less force when it was grinded off. So that came out and it worked. So that's why you see that bearing is out of there now. But I will show you uh, the other two bearings, how to remove them. Uh, All right, so there is a seal uh, remover tool. And what I did, I put a hose on it just to protect the edges of the hub and basically just put it under and pry the seal off. I'll show you on the next uh, seal. Or you can even use a screwdriver and pop it off like this. That's very easy. It will come off. Uh, the seal usually is not, not a problem. But you see the, the bearing is still in place here. So what I will do, I will flip the wheel and I will beat the bearing out of there. So I will use uh, not a special tool for uh, pulling out the bearing on this side. I will use a 20, 25 uh, millimeter socket that is placed upside down, as you see. And I line it up. It's, it has to be bigger than that center piece of the bearing. And I line up this and you basically tap it out of there. You want to hold it to the edges of the bearing as far as possible. Uh, little by little it will come out. You don't want to uh, have that socket right in the center. Just uh, do a little bit uh, on a, each side at a time and there we go. It just popped off. So you see the bearing just came off and even though this bearing is still good, I will change, uh, I, because I have ordered the whole kit. Uh, it will arrive uh, later on today, and uh, I will continue the video later once I have everything out. So that bearing is out, and I will replace it, even though it's still okay. I would recommend when you're changing the bearing, change them all in uh, one procedure. Um, that's probably your best bet. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the part for uh, to push out the bearing out of here. So now I will take the uh, sprocket side and I'll first pull the seal. There we go. The seal is still good on that one. So is the bearing looking okay here. And uh, what you want to do, you want to flip the sprocket over to the other side because the bearing has to come up uh, this way. So we'll flip it over right like this. Just go to edge to edge, try to have as big socket as you can. Uh, I'm using here one and, uh, one and a quarter. And it's out. So technically you can do it with uh, just the regular sockets and uh, they should come out. Uh, there is a little bit of water inside of this bearing. So what I will do right now, I will clean everything off uh, the sprocket with uh, kerosene. Kerosene is a good product to clean uh, all the gunk and uh, mess from the chain and mud and all that stuff. And uh, once I get my, uh, my new bearing kit that is supposed to arrive in the next uh, hour or so, I will continue with the video and I'll show you how to put them back in. Uh, you could probably install it also with some, if you have a large socket, but uh, I have a little bearing uh, uh, installation kit that I purchased uh, here in Canada at um, Princess Auto. Uh, very inexpensive, so it was uh, $34. And it comes with, uh, there's more actually in the box, uh, different size uh, bearing uh, presses. So basically you just screw that on there 
put it on top of the bearing and you gently tap it in. So just tap it in slowly and uh, you'll see how it goes. But for now, uh, let's take a little break and I'll be back at it in a few minutes. So I will start with driving that uh, buggered up uh, side of the wheel and uh, I'll put a little bit of grease here, just a little bit, so hopefully that will slide a little bit easier. I want to line up the bearing as straight as possible. Okay. It sounds a little bit different once you bottom out, so I can hear the sound, it's slightly different. And now all I have to do is just to install the seal. What I will do, I will put also a little bit of grease inside the seal. So that way it will keep the seal a bit softer and uh, lubricated and on the outer ring as well. And usually you can put the seals just with the fingers, press it in. And just to be sure, I'm just gonna Make sure it's sitting properly and flush. So we're looking good at this point. So that one is done. All right, so I finally managed to get my parts. So I got the new bearing that goes onto the sprocket side and I've got the spacer that, uh, that will go between the, uh, in a, inside the hub between the both bearings. So the old one, is pretty worn out here as you see so that's gonna have to get replaced you can see those little marks right there hopefully the camera is gonna show that so next thing the, the rear wheel uh, distant co distance collar is gonna have to be dr driven inside the bearing here uh, that because uh, that has to be there first before we install that inside the on the sprocket side so, but again, I would like to use a little bit of grease there. So you want to make sure you drive it on a piece, on a block of wood. This way you're not gonna damage the new bearing. That's actually recommended by the shop manual. Oh, that went in pretty easy. And now this bearing with the spacer facing down has to go here inside the honest pocket side. And again, the grease. It has to go a little bit further in, so there's room for the dust seal.
Okay, that's all the way in. You, you, you can hear the sound is actually different. So that's why I know that it's sitting all the way in. And now we have to put in the dust seal. I don't have a, like 100% a correct uh, tools to do that. So I'm just using whatever uh, bearing tools I had uh, from um, my toolkit that I used on my trailer before. Um, but uh, they will do the trick. It's the first time that I'm attempting to change those uh, bearings on, uh, on the Africa Twin here. I like to put a little bit of grease everywhere to protect the rubber and everything else. So this way I have a peace of mind that it will stay lubricated. So technically you should be able to push that in with your fingers just like that. don't even need any special tools here so that's uh, that's the sprocket side and that thing is facing the spacers facing on the inside so we'll put that aside right now and I will move over and bring the wheel again Just to let you know that this part does not have any dust seal so I have cleaned everything before so everything is prepared and clean. I cleaned with the kerosene, so then wiped it dry so there's nothing, no debris from the previous uh, stuff that was there. And again, a little bit of grease around. It helps to drive that bearing smoother inside. So next thing, what you wanna do, you want to put in the drive spacer. And then, tap it in uh, the other bearing. And one of the last things, there's an O-ring here. I don't think it's necessary to change it because this one is totally okay. But since I bought the whole kit, I might as well install the new O-ring. And the O-ring part number is right here, if you need to know it. And with the O-ring, same idea, you just wanna make sure to apply just a little bit of grease on it. So now you want to install your damper rubbers. And then you hold sprocket assembly. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple as you see, nothing really to it. It takes few minutes, but as uh, you saw it on my pictures, uh, the bearings were toast, so check those bearings often, I guess. Uh, I would recommend even if you have to pull in, pulling up the dust seals and have a look if anything is happening there and then just replace the dust, dust seal because once you pull that out, that's supposed to be changed. 90% uh, of the time it's gonna be damaged. Uh, like uh, in my case here, they came out pretty easy, but uh, sometimes they'll get stuck and uh, there's nothing you can do about it and uh, you're gonna have to just replace the dust seal so you don't end up like me uh, in a pretty serious situation uh, on the way back home. So I hope you found that video helpful and um, I guess uh, it's sort of a warning for everyone uh, to keep, a, keep an eye on those bearings. Uh, inspect them, I would say probably every 20, 25,000 uh, kilometers I think myself, uh, next time I won't be waiting this long uh, till 34, especially when you're riding off-road, you want to make sure um, you, you maintain those bearings. So I will be probably replacing next time those bearings about uh, 20, 25,000 kilometers, regardless whether they're good or not. This is it. Uh, as you saw, it's a pretty simple process and uh, I didn't have actual specialty tools that uh, Honda Manual is recommending. I just used whatever I had. 
but uh, I was sti still able to pull this job and uh, all I have left now uh, is just to install the wheel back on my motorcycle but uh, I will not be filming that because I can link the video right here or right here whatever that's gonna pop up uh, from my previous uh, videos that I made uh, when I was changing the tires so I was filming uh, how to remove that wheel if you need it but most of you probably do know that anyway so thank you for watching again and if you like the content as always I appreciate it if you like the video comment down below share it and subscribe to the channel and until next time cheers